Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the next session. Um, I've got uh, Kylie Green from Logan City Council with me. Um, and Kylie's going to um, give us an update on um, their website over the past 12 months, the first sort of 12 months live with Jadu. Kylie is Corporate Customer Experience Coordinator at Logan City Council. So if you've been to the um, any of the other sessions, you'll know the drill by now. Uh, the Jadu Twitter account is at Jadu. The hashtag for today is hashtag Jadu Academy, and we're giving a prize out for the best tweet of the day. Uh, there'll be a recording of the session, which you can access afterwards, uh, and throughout you can uh, add your comments or questions in the chat window on the right-hand side. Um, just feel free to ask as you go. What we'll do is at the end of the session, I will um, I'll circle back and we'll have a bit of Q&A. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I will hand over to Kylie. Cool, thanks David, and thanks everyone for having me today. Um, I feel like it's been a bit of the Logan show with that segue from LGAQ, so thanks Brett for the plugs. Good lost audio. Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? I can hear, hear me, me, Sarah. Yep. Okay, great. So, Kylie, can you speak again? Oh, perfect. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, you know. So, we might just run. So, that dropped pretty much at the start. So, um, yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> we were working out whether it was us or you want to go back to the start and, and yeah. Yeah, perfect. All right. Thank you. Okay, so can everyone hear me now? Um, so I did sort of start to say it felt like a bit like the Logan show today, so a big thank you. Can you hear us okay, Kylie? Oh, yeah, I can hear you guys again. fine. Sorry, I don't know why that dropped out. Just keep, okay. just keep going. We'll let you know if it drops out. Yeah, not sure, not a problem. Cool. Um, so we'll get going. So first of all, um, a little bit about Logan. So Logan is one of the oh, yeah, I don't know if you can hear us. Have you got an alternative uh, audio source that we could maybe try? Ah, uh, yeah, give me Sorry two Sorry about that, seconds. no worries. No, that's okay. Let me see what I've got. Just going to check with Matt if he's in his office. Yeah, we'll give, give those a try and see, because we can hear you now, but it seems to be every time we go into the um, presentation drop out. Presentation. Yeah, let me just see if I can swap over. I don't even know how to swap over the... Um, uh, and there's a cog top right, um, and you can then configure your audio settings. You may need to change the audio, um, the default settings that your computer's using, but give that give that cog on the top right uh, a go first. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you. Can you hear me okay, Kylie? No, I have to hear from the other one, so let me just okay. do change that as well. I'll keep talking. You just let me know when you can hear. Wait a sec. I'll do both. Okay. And you can hear me fine can, now? Can you hear, hear us okay? Yeah, definitely. All right. Let's um, let's try that. Sorry. Um, just continue off on this slide if you like. Yeah, no worries. Sorry again, everyone. No um so I've already covered that twice now and hopefully everyone heard me. So um, 
327,000 people from more than 217 different cultures. Um, so 25% of people living in Logan were born overseas and 16% of our community speak another language at home other than English. Um, and 6% of our people do live with a day-to-day -day disability. So 600 plus residents are vision impaired and 35% of our community left school in grade 10 or lower. And this part was actually really huge for us. When we looked at our old website, our old website was all written in post-grad. Um, and by those stats, you can see why we needed to do the transformation because we were potentially disadvantaging more than 30% of our community. 50% um, of our residents are aged 34 or younger um, with 22% under 15 years. So um, we've got a really young community. Um, so that's really exciting for the future of Logan. Um, so the big motivations for our transformation was our community profile. So all of the stats that I just provided. Um, our community first value, so, and that is we work together to know our customers' needs so we can deliver what matters and what makes a difference. Um, we make decisions with empathy and recognise that our community needs are at the core of every decision we make now and into the future. Um, our access and inclusion plan, um, so that runs from 2019 to 2022 and the key for us on that was around the Disability Discrimination Act 1992 and looking at the web content accessibility guidelines and I'll talk more about that shortly. Um, and then our CX strategy, um, which is running from 2020 to 2024, and that was only endorsed a couple of weeks ago. And it really flows on with what Tracy was saying. Um, it really is about our people as well, and we're firm believers too. It's about our people delivering um, great customer experience. So um, really focusing on our people plan and as well as our digital plan. Um, we went live with our website um, on International Day for People with Disability last year. But before we went live, we always like to do things a little different at Logan. Um, so we had our old website up and running and we wanted to give the community a sneak peek of what we'd been working on for the last 12 months. So we had our amazing branding team design this banner. Um, so it was really around the change management piece for our community, not just for all of our internal stakeholders and branches. So we introduced the website via a sneak peek and we had that up and running for about three weeks prior to our go live. And that allowed the community to get a feel, a hands-on touch of the changes that was going to impact them. Um, but it also allowed us to start collecting feedback from the community because the site was built with them in mind. So all of that feedback we got before Go Live allowed us to implement that into the build of the new site. Um, so as mentioned earlier, we did um, launch the site on International Day for People with Disability. Um, so that was super exciting and a really proud moment for the team because our biggest thing was making sure that we had a website that was fully inclusive and accessible so our whole community um, could go to the site, navigate it and find the information um, and then read and understand it. Being that we are a fully dynamic um, and really cultural community, it was really important for us that we um, made sure that the site was built for all of um, those different cultures in mind um, so everyone could come and um, easily navigate. Um, Brett stole my thunder a little bit, but Brett, I'll forgive you. Um, after Go Live, we were super excited to actually receive um, gold standard in plain language. Um, we were the first local government in Australia to actually um, receive this standard. Um, and the biggest thing for us with this, Google Translate is only as good as the words that it reads. So we found with everything being written at postgraduate previously, um, it didn't always translate it um, the way it should. So by us using plain language and writing things in customers' terms, um, it also allowed us to 
really define the Google Translate and translate it in a better way in those other languages. We've included um, a link there to our um, case study for our gold standard. Um, that one was 12 months in the making. So as soon as we started building and designing the site, um, we brought a team of writers in, from internally on board to actually start rewriting the content. Um, the next one, uh, which was our main goal from the start, as I said, was around our accessibility. And I'm super excited to share that it was two years in the making, um, but last week we finally received our compliance certificate for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1AA. Um, so this really was a huge all of council effort um, and something we're all really proud of. But this accreditation, along with our gold standard in plain um, language, makes our corporate website one of the most inclusive and accessible local government websites in Australia. Um, and really, it was all done um, to meet the needs of our community. So that's something we're really proud and really passionate about. We haven't actually um, announced this um, fully internally yet um, or externally, um, but given next week is 12 months since our website went live, um, and also it will be International Day for People with Disability again next Thursday. Um, we'll do a media release and um, launch that then. So as I said, it's a huge achievement. It really started back in 2019 with the Access and Inclusion Plan. And then we really just picked it up from there um, two years ago. And we were really lucky to be supported by Jadu, who is just as passionate about accessibility as we are. And then um, Brett and the team at LGAQ for working on all the extra development and stuff to get us um, where we were. Um, when the auditor did the work last week, um, they did say they'd contact me if there was a major breach and I was walking around with my phone in my hand um, but yeah, just absolutely thrilled for the team and so proud of them to come out with um, the double A. Um, so then moving into COVID, so for us, because we'd built our site and went live just in December, when uh, March came around, we were really lucky that we built the site really focusing on future needs and future proofing our business. So. I'm going to really say it was a really seamless, effortless experience for us to actually add in the COVID and start to promote online services. Um, so this is a snapshot of our website when we went live at, um, in March with the additional COVID tile and the promotion of online services. So we had done so much work throughout the year, um, making sure everything was accessible and available online. Um, with the gold standard, the Google Translate, um, the Read Speaker, so um, people were actually able to have everything read out to them. So whatever ability or disability, the site suited everybody. Um, so our local recovery group and our media team, they were the ones that really drove the information. So then it was up to my team to actually put it all in align with our style guides and making sure everything was accessible for the community. Um, so this continues to stay on our site at the moment and it's great that the restrictions have eased um, throughout Australia. Um, but this was us just letting the community know that um, we were continuing to manage the impacts of COVID um, and all of the different industries and agencies we were working with to ensure that really our community, our customers and staff uh, we're at the front of every decision we were making. So yeah, in Australia, it's a little different to the UK. So um, Queensland Health was the lead agency. Um, but again, our community don't see a difference between local, state and federal government. So a lot of them came to us as their first point of contact. So a lot of the information we were linking out to the main providers, but it was just really important um, that we had that place for the community to go and to let them know that we were there with them. Um, on the, unfortunately, during the period of time, we actually had to issue rates um, not long after close down. A lot of people 
um, were laid off work and lost their jobs. So it was a really hard time for the community. So we worked with the finance team and built a hardship form. So that went live around March and we probably had over a thousand people take up that form. So that allowed them um, customers or people in the community to actually say they're going to have a hard time paying, I need help and that would go through to our rates team and they would organise either payment plans or different things for that community member so they didn't need to worry about the added stress of a rates notice when they were already going through a really hard time. So yeah, there's some great work done from people all over council. Um, as far as what's next for us, we did have LGAQ here last week and I've met with David from LGAQ, I mean Jadu a few weeks back. So we've got lots on the board, even though the last two weeks has been crazy busy and I'm not going to say it was easy because if anyone jumps into accessibility and plain English and thinks it's going to be smooth sailing, please come and talk to me first. I tell everyone I just look nearly 50 and I'm actually only 25. We talk about blood, sweat and tears. There wasn't any blood. There could have been if it carried on, but yeah, there was. it was a lot of um, sweat and tears to get us where we needed to, to go and a huge change for our organisation. And we're still bringing people along on that change. So I am giving the team Christmas to recover and then we kick in again. Um, so we're going to kick off with a rebrand. So that will be happening, So which will make... Um, the site a little more vibrant with some little more colour palette. Um, we're going to kick into a career section on our website. Um, it's one of the most um, used, um, viewed section on our website, so we're going to do some work around that. We are going live with live chat, so that will happen probably around end of February and March. And also Lara, our chatbot, and I know I talked about Lara um, probably at last year's um, Jadu Academy. Lara is currently live on our City of Logan app and we went live with no launch whatsoever. So we just wanted to get an idea of those users that are using the app, um, how they're going to really utilise Lara and it gave us a small sort of proof of concept trial group. So Lara and live chat will go together, uh, go live together um, and that gives customers that real channel of choice um, that, we were, that we've been talking about. Um, we're also looking at a proof of concept using CXM. I'm all about sharing's caring, um, but this one here is going to remain a little bit confidential until we've um, really just worked out if it is going to work for the business. But um, once that's happened, we're more than happy to share with all of the rest of the Jadu users in Queensland and around Australia because it's something that will benefit us us all if it does come um, does get the outcomes we're looking for. Um, and then finally, this year too, we want to complete a final review of our thousand PDFs. Um, so for this one here, we started our project and I was listening um, to South Gippsland where they had 100 forms and I was like, I wish we just had 100 forms. So we started our project um, two years ago with 5,571 forms and PDFs and yes, I still have nightmares about that. Um, we are finally down to 1,000 and I'm happy to say every single one of those is meets AA for accessibility, which is a feat in itself. So now we'll loop back to those branches who were a little bit hesitant when we first went live and we'll start working with them to, where possible, convert to um, either online forms or actual content, um, which makes it even more truly inclusive um, and accessible for the community. So it's another big 12 months um, and who knows what else will pop up. I know Matt's listening, um, who's my boss, and I am one of those ones. If I see something bright and shiny, I'm at it. Um, but he's made it pretty clear I just need to stick to these because it's been a full-on couple of years. Um, but who knows what else will get added to the list. But yeah, that pretty much gives you an overview of Logan and what the last 12 months and the last, especially, I guess, the last two years has looked like for us. Um, but as I said, none of it would have been possible if we didn't have a council that was really supportive of our approach and also um, 
a team. I've got a team of doers and can-dos and amazing people that um, allowed us to be where we are today. So that's it for me, and I'm going to throw over to any questions. Oh, great presentation, Kylie. Thanks for that. We've got um, quite a few questions actually popping through in the chat. So if anyone else has got more to add, please just add them in. Uh, the first question is from David. Uh, have you found the shift to simple language flow to your sub subject matter experts, or is there still a lot of rewrite work that has to occur? Have you seen any other benefits from this change? Um, it's a real mixed bag. We've got some uh, branches that are absolutely amazing um, and they've come on the journey with us um, and they're using the tools that we use and we just need to do some slight tweaking where others use us completely. And to be honest, um, we don't mind doing that. They are subject matter experts, whether it's in water, engineering, waste, health, environment, we don't need to ask them to be experts in plain English as well. Um, uh, but it's really important that we work with them because obviously there's legislative requirements and things like that. So in no way we will ever plain English legislative requirements. Um, and we always get that, their sign off to make sure we haven't changed context in any way because that's really important. Um, so it is a back and forth process, but we will stay with a centralised team, um, whereas our old website had 138 active web editors. Now we've just got a team of four, which gives us that consistent message and allows us to carry the plain language through. That's great. You've actually answered in, in that answer, you've answered another question from Selchuk around um, plain language and uh, legal terms, which is good. Um, the next question uh, from Selchuk, uh, do you have external feeds coming into the website? If yes, how did you manage to get uh, AA compliance for those? Um, so we do it the other way around. We link out to external feeds. Um, the way with AA compliance works here in Australia is our website is what was actually being done and everything that was within our control. Um, so example, ePathway, we did try and work with the vendor, which is our customer request management system, to make the user interface accessible, but their product itself is not yet accessible. So we did everything in our control to try and make it seamless by putting a like a facade on the top of it like um, to make it more accessible but they're out of our control so that won't get marked against you when you're going through your accessibility audit. Um, but we have set new guidelines um, so where other business units they may have their own site for us to link out to it from now and in the future we expect anything to be um, to meet the minimum standards for accessibility, which is just 2.1a, where we've gone over and above to the 2.1a. Excellent. Um, David's got a question which I think is, uh, I think, one that every council must grapple with when it comes to accessibility, and, and it's what tools do you use to ensure that content stays at the, at the quality level you have set for plain language and Um, yeah, so for us, that one there is having the one team. Um, so where we used to have, as I mentioned, the 138 active web editors, um, now we just have um, my team that does all of the quality before anything goes up. So no one else out in the organisation has access to the main site. Our media team have access to media releases, um, but they've got different processes and procedures. Um, so yeah, it's just the one team. So at the moment I've got a team of four um, and they're doing an amazing job. Excellent, I've got a couple more. Um, question from Glenn. What will be your team's approach to the visual refresh in the new year? Well, we're really excited about it. Um, I've worked with Logan for nearly five years and to see um, when we were building the site, I'll be really honest, I was just like, it's just so blue and yellow. It's just so blue and yellow. It really doesn't um, 
really speak a lot about what Logan really is about. So we're really excited about it um, because it's not just about a new brand for Logan, it's about a new vision, a new direction. So a lot of it will be working um, with our branding and marketing team um, and seeing really what we can do to really make the site um, really marry in with that new vision and brand. Excellent. And we've got a question here, at, um, both uh, Peter and Nathan uh, from Cardinia uh, kind of asked the same uh, question really. I'll, I'll, um, I'll ask, I'll put Nathan's question to you. Are all four web authors comm staff? How do you go uh, uh, about managing routine updates, e.g. fee changes, small updates, etc.? And how do you usually collaborate with subject matter experts, i.e. do they send you a draft or do you set up a meeting, collaborate on a shared document, etc.? Yeah, um, this might surprise a lot of people. So our website actually sits within customer experience and community engagement. So it doesn't sit with marketing team or a media team. So it sits with people that deal with the customers day in and day out. So my current four people, I've got one that is an accessibility expert. Um, I've got two that are in Jardu um, all of the time and they're mainly building everything. And then I've got one that's a jack of all trades. So she does all of the plain English. She can also do um, any of the Jardu updates and things like that. But one, the one that does all the plain English, um, none of them are properly trained writers. They've done it, they've learnt the skills throughout the project. When we worked with a plain English expert, I call her Judge Judy, but it was actually Dr Judy Gregory. Um, so she's given the team the skills um, to be able to write the way that we do. We manage everything via an inbox at the moment. So the girls just go in and assign. Um, and apart from really, really large documents um, that we need to make for accessibility, everything else gets turned around within 24 hours. Um, the branches will come to us, whether it's for a project, um, a change or something, and whoever's been assigned from the inbox, they'll work with that branch back and forward until both parties are happy and then it will go live. Um, so, yeah, it really is teamwork, um, but there are my team are the ones that just have to say, remember, we've got to meet our standards still. I've got a question here, Peter, it's a, a sort of a follow-up. Did you have to sell the idea of centralising content authoring or was the, was the organisation on board with the idea, I guess, from the start? Yeah, so we went out, we did lots of stakeholder engagement sessions across the organisation and we really focused on the 138 active web editors. Again, like I said earlier, um, they are experts in their own field, whether it be water, waste. Um, they were never experts um, in website or writing. It was just an additional job they were given. Um, so I'm going to say 98% of our organisation were like, yes, have it. Um, we still want to be the subject matter experts. And they went back and forth with us because, again, we were giving them time back. Um, and then a couple, about 2% of the organisation, they were hanging on a little tighter. Um, but in the end, it was just making sure we were taking them through the change, explaining the why and um, really turning around what it means for them. So, yeah, in the end, I'm pretty sure we've got 100% on board now. But, yeah, it was a huge change. Great. Last couple. Um, so David's asked whether you, I guess, your team also manage social. Uh, so, no, we have a digital marketing, marketing team that sits in the marketing and media area that looks after social. But in saying that, another part of my team looks after private messages and visitor posts because they're really the ones that customers are asking requests for information, requests for service. Um, so they are looked after by my um, customer experience support team. So they sit beside the digital. And then that way we can really focus on that consistent tone of voice, the consistent messaging um, and really work together on that. I think Sarah had a poll um, to finish up with. I see um, 
if we got time, yeah, we'll take Selchuk's question as well. Um, we might, if we get any more questions, we might have to sort of send them through as a follow up, Kylie. Um, lots, yeah. It's really good. Lots and lots of questions coming through. So Selchuk's asked, is there a reason uh, for not using built in approval publishing process and keep all content authors on the platform? Um, I'm going to say I'm a control freak, but yeah, I am a little <laughs> bit. But no, it was more just it that the level of access and stuff they would require in the system. And to be honest, it was an easier sell for us saying we're going to do it for you. Because as I said, that wasn't their main job and it was just something they were given. So the team, this is the my team, it's the best way they decided to work with um, rather than going that back and forth with approval. Um, they either jump on a Teams meeting, do a face-to-face -face once they get the email and that's their preferred um, way, but it doesn't mean that we wouldn't eventually go to something like this or make changes, but it's what works for us at the moment. Great. And Sarah, did you want to pop that poll up uh, around accessibility? Um, yeah, great. Um, so that poll's now live up on the right-hand side if, if everyone just wants to kind of take a look. And the question is, is accessibility part of your council's digital transformation program? Yes, no, or not sure? Wow. And this is always really alarming for me, and I guess because I can see the results, because for me, um, producing accessible content's not only the right thing to do, it's also a mandate. Um, we just don't have what the UK has where it really drives it. Um, but I don't know, I just don't understand why we would be treating people with disabilities different because they have the same fundamental rights as everybody else in the community. So it should be just business as usual. Um, so I guess that's my response to all of the not sure's or no's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think um, put a challenge I, out there. Look, I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, on the, I'm, I'm as much of a, a passionate advocate as you are for accessibility, Kylie. I pride, you know, many years ago, I spent I spent uh, seven years working with people who are disabled in the community and helping them get back to living independently. So, from a personal point of view, it's, it's something I'm passionate about. But I guess, um, you know, in fairness, if we looked at the UK market. Until things were, uh, there was a legislative requirement. There were people, there were organisations like Logan who were really doing it because you know they believed passionately in it and it was the right thing to do. But um, I think the reality is is that uh, you know in order for it to get to the top of the pr priority list for a lot of organisations, there needs to be some some legislative uh, teeth there. So um, yeah, but completely take on board what you're saying. Um, certainly very important. So. Um, I, I, if there's any questions we've missed, we'll, we'll follow those up. I think we're out of time, so I just wanted to I'll say. Just quickly, oh, yeah. sorry, the video. Sorry, the video that um, Sarah just showed. I sent this to LGAQ and Jadu this morning. So, um, if you get the chance, have a look at it. This is one of um, a young group of Logan residents. Um, they're aged 17 to 19. They're called the Kingstones. Um, they all suffer, well, it's not even suffering because if you watch their video, they're not suffering at all, but it's some um, one of them, at least everyone has a disability of some sort, but, um, and they've created a, a new song. Um, so I've shared that and Sarah sent it out to you all. So it's a pretty cool message to understand they aren't different to anyone else. Um, so why should we put putting them in a different bucket? Cool. Thanks, Kylie. Yeah, I've watched the video that you sent through this morning. Uh, really, really empowering. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, and thanks for um, for your talk uh, and all the questions from everyone who was on board uh, today. So, um, Sarah, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kylie. That was awesome. Um, so we've got another session. Uh, I've got a bit of a break for lunch, um, so not, not long, but long enough. Um, so we'll catch up with everybody um, if you're joining us for this afternoon's sessions. Thanks again, Thanks, Kylie. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.